Now that we understand how dissolving works, we're ready to start talking about precipitation reactions. And when we look at reactions, we want to look at the mechanism by which that reaction occurs. A mechanism is just the actual process that something goes through as it's happening. So understanding the mechanism can really help us wrap our heads around what's going to happen and make accurate predictions. So in order to start talking about a precipitation reaction, let's consider certain ionic substances that don't dissolve. For example, silver chloride, AgCl. If I put this into a beaker of water, So when the silver chloride is in this beaker of water, the water molecules are still going to arrange themselves in the most ideal state that they can. So these hydrogens are still going to have these, have these little attractions to the chlorine. And the oxygens are still going to have an attraction to the silver. However, the attraction between the silver and the chloride is going to be stronger. It's going to be so strong that these water molecules don't pull that silver chloride apart. And so we can imagine what would happen if I did have a couple of substances, like let's say, say silver nitrate, Ag, NO3, and sodium chloride. Both of these are very soluble. If I were to put these into a solution, both of them would dissolve. But when I mix these solutions together, so I'm gonna mix these two, so I'm gonna pour this solution into this solution. Well then, in that case, I'm gonna have a reaction. So let's, let's go ahead and identify that both of these are aqueous. Both of them are an aqueous solution. And then let's see what happens when this mixes. I'm gonna use a, an extra wide beaker for this. So if these two solutions get poured together, then when the silver and chlorine ions hit each other, they stick together. So this, this chemical bond here, this ionic bond, is then stronger than the water pulling it apart. And so what we end up with is our sodium and our nitrate, those are still going to be dissolved. So Na plus, that's still going to be aqueous, and NO3 minus, that's still going to be aqueous. But the AgCl, that's going to be a solid. So if I were to mix these two solutions, I would actually see these two perfectly clear solutions, because both of these, both of these are completely colorless. They are completely clear. You can't tell the difference between these, between silver nitrate and sodium chloride and just plain water. But once you mix them together, this really milky white solid starts to form. And at first, it, it does look like milk. But then if you give it a little while, then this solid stuff settles at the bottom. And that solid stuff is the silver chloride. Because now it's in bigger chunks and it's going to settle to the bottom of the container. So that's the gist of a precipitation reaction. That's the mechanism by which this is going to occur. And that's something that we want to be able to do. We want to be able to look at these. If I've got, if I've got let's say, let's do another precipitation If I've got, let's say, copper chloride, CuCl2, plus sodium hydroxide. Both of these are an aqueous solution. Well, copper and OH, those are going to form a solid. We're going to get a CuOH. That's going to be 2. And that's going to be a solid. And then we'll be left over with the NaCl that is still in the solution. So if I were to draw this out, let's let's draw two beakers. Let's let's draw this at the moment that it mixes. So the moment it mixes before the copper and the hydroxide bind together. So at the moment that this is mixed together, before anything has a chance to interact. Well, this copper and this hydroxide are going to be drawn to each other. And so I can draw out what happens after they meet.
And so after they meet, they're going to stick together. So copper and hydroxide are going to stick together. So I could really draw this as a big crystal. Have the hydroxide surrounded by copper. No H. It's actually going to be, a, that's not the exact ratio it's going to be in. But... So that's the mechanism that drives a precipitation reaction. Certain ionic substances are able to stick together better than others. And so copper hydroxide is one of those. In water, it will stick together. And different substances are soluble in different solvents. But we're going to be using exclusively water. And so we're going to have everything dissolved in water. And in order to make predictions about this, we're going to use a chart that will tell us when something is soluble or insoluble. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is this NaCl. Now, ac across this reaction, this went through zero changes. Even though we have on the left side Na paired with OH and Cl paired with Cu, and the NaCl gets together on the right side, if we look at, if we look at our model here, if we look at this, we can see that chlorine and sodium, from start to finish, they don't change. There's no change happening in those ions. So they don't care that the copper and the hydroxide got together. They don't, they don't notice that, you know, the sodium used to be with the hydroxide. It doesn't notice that the hydroxide isn't there anymore because it's surrounded by the water. So that doesn't affect these at all. So we call this, these, these, both of these are spectator ions. Okay? So they're spectator ions because they don't participate. They're just watching the reaction happen. They don't actually do anything. The only part that's important here is this OH and this Cu. And so we could rewrite this to draw attention only to the important part. We could rewrite this as Cu2 plus plus 2 OH minuses is making Cu OH2. And then put our states. And that would be a more efficient way to say that. We, we call this a net ionic equation. Okay? 